Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Not running live at the moment. This is a, this this MX16 is installed on my uh, the machine I use for most of my actual stuff around the house and development type work for MX. It's an old HP. Uh, sadly, on its last legs, it, the hinges it's a laptop. So the hinges are broken. The screen is flaky. But hey. Still runs, still got a Core i5, still does all my video editing, everything on it. Because, you know, part of the Linux lifestyle is not throwing away the computer until it's done. And I'm going to squeeze every last drip of life out of this thing. So at any rate, so I've been running for a while. Obviously, there's been a few updates. Uh, so I thought I'd show you a couple things. One, I've, I've got this system customized the way I want. I'm running the uh, XSE custom... Um, uh, compositor at the moment. Uh, I've got my term terminal drop down terminal panel configured the way I like with no min borders or tabs or anything. I've got Chrome installed. I've got all my QT stuff installed. Um, installed Penta because it's easier to use than GIMP for me because I'm kind of a Microsoft Paint kind of guy and actually I find Penta a little intimidating so that shows you how far I go into the graphics world. Uh, but it's a nice simple graphics editor. I've got Skype from the MX Package Installer. I've got Chrome from the MX Package Installer. I've got Dropbox from the MX Package Installer. Multimedia, what did I install in here? Oh, Handbrake and Caden Live uh, and Simple Screen Recorder. Why aren't I using OBS Studio? Because you're looking at an Intel laptop with a graphics chip in it hard, uh, that's uh, too old for OBS Studio. Um, OBS Studio requires OpenGL 3. I ain't got it. I top out at OpenGL 2.1. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's Iron Lake. So this is just before Sandy Bridge in the graphics world of, of Intel. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? I think that's all I've really installed that's out of the ordinary that doesn't come with it. Just mostly my media stuff and and uh, and uh, and Dropbox. So at any rate, you see all this, all my all my stuff around here. Here's Skype. Here's Dropbox. I got a couple updates. So I'd like to keep the system snapshotted every now and then. Uh, now what snapshot? Snapshots are a tool for that allows you that allows us to take an installed system, compress it back down into an ISO. And then you can you can boot it just like a regular live MX or Antics for that matter, uh, disk or USB or live USB, uh, which whatever your preference is. Uh, it takes a while to compress the file system, then install the file system down into that. So there's going to be some pauses in this video. But first, I'm going to update the. I've got some updates here, so I want to get those installed before I do it. There's all sorts of 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 cute things that need. You know what? I uh, I didn't know the virtual box was going to be in the mix today. Uh, that is going to take a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the update. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back after all the updates. So I want to back my system up now. Now I've got all my apps installed. We're going to run the MX Snapshot Utility. MX Snapshot. And it's your root password. I probably froze there for all you people at home. Okay, so so here this is the MX snapshot tool and it's going to tell you a few things one it's going to it's telling me that I have got 8.6 gigabytes used on root and it also says that I have on my slash home partition which for me is the same as my root partition okay it's got 11 gigs free and it says the free space should be sufficient to hold the compressed data from root and home so um, 
I believe that's actually I have enough because I have a it's a 20 gig. That means I've got 11 gigs free. This thing's gonna compress down to four, eight and four, nine and four is 13. I should be okay. So I'm gonna try running the snapshot the way it is. So I'm gonna keep that. Now here, this is this is where things get interesting. This is the configuration screen. It tells you what kernel is gonna be wrapped up into your ISO. It's going to tell you the name. It's going to tell you where you're storing the thing. Now, you notice it's home slash, it's slash home slash snapshot. It's going to be a subfolder. So it's, it's actually outside your home system. Your own folder, rather. So you can edit the configuration file, which gives you a bunch of stuff that you can change. Uh, it's well commented. If you do a couple of these under your belt and you feel like you want to mess around with things, you can, you can read this and change, change some settings. Whoops, that takes me back a page. There's there's something interesting. You can you can exclude certain files. Do not edit this entry block unless you know what you're doing. Well, this that's that's fair. Uh, but this gives you all the files that we're not wrapping up into the ISO by default uh, because either they're too large, like VirtualBox VMs. I mean, seriously, you don't want to start wrapping up your VMs into your into your snapshot because you'll end up with snapshots that are 20, 30, 40, 80, 100 gigs. That's not doing anybody any good. Um, some other things, we're not backing up the trash, you know, that kind of thing. You can uh, you can uncomment certain folders if you don't if you want those excluded. Okay. Um, or you can say you can exclude certain folders individually. Okay. Or you can say down here at the bottom, you can say you can, you can you have preserve account. So I have an installed account. It's Dolphin. It's got all my settings. It's got my wallpaper. It's got my my terminal the way I like it and all that cool stuff. I can preserve that into a personal backup. Yeah, you can also reset it so that it doesn't it it doesn't sync. It doesn't save the home folder and actually pulls everything from the what's called the scale folder that's in slash Etsy that's the same folder that's used for making new users so it'll take that information make a demo account and it'll be just like you downloaded a fresh ISO except your apps will still be on there everything else will be the same as the default ISO but your apps will be on there so I'm going to say preserve my account now I'm gonna say that with a with a with a, a caveat in that I am going to exclude all the folders in my home folder uh, Mostly for for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to save all the stuff onto my ISO. I don't want to save my downloads, my pictures. All that stuff is in the data. That's a separate backup. I'm just making a system ISO that I can use not only for this system, but for future systems, for any computer, because I'll be able to boot this system on on multiple machines and still have all my apps, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to exclude all the folders. I'll also show you one other thing in case when we boot back up things look weird. My home folder is a little different than a lot of people's home folders. You'll notice that instead of folders, I have a bunch of little arrows here. That means it's a sim link. What I'm actually doing is linking, uh, because I dual boot, I dual boot window, actually I triple boot, but whatever. I dual boot on this machine between Windows and MX. Now I spend most of my time in MX. Why do I go into Windows? Uh, at home, almost never for any reason whatsoever. Uh, occasionally I need something from iTunes. Okay. I do have a Windows virtual machine, but iTunes, honestly, the experience is lacking. It, actually, in general, the experience is lacking. Um, uh, but actually, I do it mostly to play games with the boys because uh, with, with, with Danny and, and Alex because, well... And honestly, it's easier to set the Windows games up in, in Windows than it is to try to deal with play on Linux or a virtual machine or all that stuff. Um, hey, it's just the way it is. I'm I'm uh, I'm a, I'm a almost a full time Linux user at home. Full time Linux at work. It's still a Windows guy. Hey, way of the world. So anyway, so I have these these sim links, and I'm not going to save them now. Some of these sim links are going to carry over because they're not in the excludes list. My WIP folder, my work in progress folder. My download, uh, my Dropbox folder is going to be there. My Caden Live folder is an actual folder, so it's going to show up when I preserve my account. Um, they'll just show up as broken links until I set things up. They're links to this data partition, so it's actually a separate partition from my root drive. So think of it as kind of like having a separate home, except I don't really have a separate home. I have a home 
for MX16 with all its settings and if I want to run a different Linux like say Antics on my other partition uh, it can actually have sim links to the exact same uh, documents folders but it can have its completely different set of settings so I don't have to mess with you know oh I got an XFC folder over here and an IceWim folder over there and I don't I need to keep I don't I need to keep them in sync I don't, I don't, nah, no I just run run it the way I want to run it I got all the settings in a home folder store on the root partition of each system and I just sim link all the data files okay and actually my Windows partition can also pick up the data files because that's how I roll I want to be able to access the crap no matter where I'm in so at any rate now you know why things might look a little bit funky when we come back around I'm going to have some broken sim links until I finish setting the system up um, so anyway so I'm going to run this thing preserve accounts we're going to hit next okay snapshot now has all the information it needs to create the ISO this will take some time yeah it's going to take some time I know this machine is actually going to take something like um, uh, 20 minutes to do uh, so I'm gonna let it go I'm gonna hit OK I'm gonna let the thing go be back when it's done okay there we are we will finished inside this mess is all finished okay inside this mess there were a lot of warnings and er not warnings really but things that it was telling it it was doing uh, different warning messages uh, I'm going to take the ISO and turn it into a USB stick and see if it boots. First we're going to close this and open up File Manager. And let's see, it was in Home Snapshot. There is the ISO. It's a one point gig. 1.8 gig ISO. The default ISO is around 1.2, so that's all my apps uh, on there. I'm putting in a uh, 4 gig US SanDisk USB cruiser. Now, obviously, it depends on the size of your ISO, how big you're going to get. I've seen in the message boards people making ISOs bigger than 4 gigs. I'm just going to warn you, strictly speaking, uh, the ISO is based on a DVD, and they tend to max out. 4.2-ish things get hokey after that. You're not guaranteed of things booting. In my experience, one reason I try to keep my ISO slow by not folding in all my data. I just fold in my apps. Video games would be the other one that would be huge. So anyway, sticks going in. We're going to run the live USB maker. And we're going to select an ISO. Whoops. I'm going to select an ISO, open, da, 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 apply, and there it goes. This is going to take like two minutes. Be right back. Okay, so live USB creation successful. All right. Well, I'm going to reboot on the USB stick. See if it works. See you in a minute. Okay, hey guys, we're back. This is the live stick that we just made off our system that we just off the snapshot ISO we just made from my installed system. You can see my wallpaper is set up. That's because I preserved my home folder. You remember that? Now, if you if you did a reset, for instance, if you wanted to make a custom ISO to give to somebody, uh, you would get the default wallpaper and stuff. But my custom one's here because of my user account's been preserved you'll see that it even says dolphin up here in the corner if you do a reset it'll say demo the, ins the uh, installer is helpfully placed back on the desktop so you can install the thing you know everything was here all my apps are here Dropbox actually won't work uh, because uh, it can't find because of the way my, my home folder is set up with with the sim link see my Dropbox sim link is broken right now I need to go through and fix uh, my sim links if I after I installed I would need to do that um, uh, because the FS tab is actually reset when it's done because the ISO, the snapshot, the, the live USB, uh, the idea is that it's usable on multiple machines. So uh, uh, that reset, so those kind of customizations don't work. But if you had everything in a regular home folder, hey, it would work fine. And I can put those, folder, those links back um, lickety-split. So there you go. Proof of concept. Had an installed system.
Installed system. Ran MX snap. Made all my customizations. Ran MX snapshot. S caught the entire operating system and all my apps into a new ISO. Used live USB maker included in that to run the ISO. Then rebooted and I'm here. Done. Job done. You want to know one more cool thing? Live USB maker will offer to clone the running live system if I'm running live. Now this works on the regular ISO too. What's clone mean? That means I can stick another USB stick in here right now and I don't even need the original snaps not ISO. ISO. <laughs> It'll just make the clone right off this stick. One stick to another stick. Brilliant. For tips, tricks, how to's, head over to head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forums on mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.